fuck. I got. You wanna you wanna show people what you've just done? Had a sip of a monster, guys. It's currently twenty seven minutes past three. My sleep's fucked. I'm gonna have to deload from tomorrow. Mate, you do have caffeine. Quite I'm not right. You trained at like five yesterday, and you had <laughs> caffeine. It wasn't five. It was about 4.45. And to be fair, I actually looked at the time. I don't go to bed. Mate, six-hour half-life, even though people think that that means that after six hours, it's not it's in your system. It still is in your system. Yeah, it's <laughs> gone completely. I don't think people understand what half-lives actually are and how they work. Yeah, I had it at 4.45. Um, and I, I was like, well, I'll be in bed by about 11, 11.30. And to be fair, I actually slept really well. Um, but then I always think that when people say, oh, I sleep really well. It's like, but did you really sleep, you know? Yeah, well, I only had a quarter of a scoop. Like I, I, I usually do three quarters of a scoop of either conviction or MB. I like had a quarter, so it was like Lion. the minimum amount. Of caffeine. Hmm? What'd you say? Lion. Oh yeah, actually, I had, I had, I had three scoops. God, I, I had a client mate tell me that she had three scoops of a sleep aid, like fade out or something, and it didn't even do anything. And I was like. Right, that's concerning. Like three scoops, like one scoop of fade out is like you'd you'd be ruined. Genuinely, mate. Like it knocks you out. No, I think it depends. And I, I said to her, like, did you really? I said, did you, did you really? I was like, did you really have three scoops? Yeah, but it affects everybody differently, doesn't it? Like I've had obviously I've said to you, like pre's that I've had that haven't affected me. And even like sleep supplements, like I've used the Dr. Dean sleep stack and it was all right. Like it doesn't yeah. knock me out, but then you have other people who are like, "Oh my god!" Like absolutely knock me out. Like support max neuro PM. I was never like, "Oh wow!" Like I've okay. gone straight to sleep and I've had an amazing sleep. Like I think it just affects. You don't me. seem to be affected. You don't seem to be get like you're from a stimulant perspective, not really a lot. And then likewise, like for the for the exact opposite, you know, <laughs> you almost seem to kind of be quite neutral. Yeah, you know. I'm quite think, sensitive to stimulants and, and such. I think part of that is that I almost, I don't know, I, well, this is in my opinion, I think people over-exaggerate massively. So like, yeah. MV, MV Pre is good, don't get me wrong, but everybody makes out it's like the best thing in the world. And like, oh my God, this is the best Pre ever. Like, Or people will use a pump product and they'll get a decent pump that they probably get anyway. And they're like, oh, oh my God, God it's the best amazing. pump product. Like, yeah. just, yeah. People just over-exaggerate. So I think yes. I'm the opposite. And it's also I almost like, play it down and I'm like, unless yeah. it makes me feel like ridiculously good, I'll be like, I didn't even really notice it. Yeah. Same with the sleep aid. Unless it knocks me out, I'll be like, yeah, it's all right. It's nothing amazing. Yeah. By the way, for the people on the podcast, people watching, you'll see there's a hand that's just crept into my screen. That's Pete's hand. So <laughs> <laughs> we've got Pete uh, filming for, for my YouTube today. So if you don't watch my YouTube, but you watch you, me on YouTube but the podcast then what are you doing go and watch my videos as well and reese's yeah thanks thanks for that mate so it means a lot yeah no that's fair enough but yeah no i do i do get exactly what you mean it is literally unfortunately it is like a trend and you get people who say oh, i took this pre and it's more so like like we said before it's that thought of like i am in, in my entire life have only ever had one pre that i legitimately was like God, that's fucking horrible and brutal. And it's the pre that ended up, we took, and it got banned like three months later. That was the only pre that I've ever that thought, horrible. that's really, really impressive. Yeah, like that's the only one. Like that, all the other pre's, I'm like, yeah, that's sound. You know, and all the other pump products, I'm like, yeah, not bad. There's a few that are wank. There's a few that are better than wank. <laughs> and that's pretty much that. But unfortunately, we live in a society where it's like, I took this, it's amazing. Like, you, you know, when you first started training, like you'd be asked oh what protein do you take i actually got asked that warehouse last week in the bathroom some guy goes you're competing this year and i went no mate and he was like oh yeah what pro yeah what and he was like what protein do you take what protein, take? What protein do you take? nah he was like probably about 60 kilos soaking wet there's no chance he knew about anything performance enhancing and i was just like i just laughed and i was like what do you eat and he was like uh, a lot and i was like eat more <laughs> i just walked off I was like, I left. I was like, probably came across right, right ballet, not, but it was like, I'm not easy, right, twat. Yeah, no, but I'm not going to be in a toilet. Like, you you've seen the warehouse toilet; it's a bit sketchy. I'm not sitting in the warehouse toilet and being like, yeah, mate. So this is what you want. You want this. You want that. You want to be taking perform yeah. way. Like, you want to make it into a paste. I'm like, no, I don't. Just I'm not doing anything like that. You you make, you've got to make it into a paste for it to actually spike MPS. <laughs> if it's not oh, yeah. a paste, it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, no, it has to be a pace. It has to be a 
copy and paste. My story didn't go up, mate, so I need to uh, take another photo. This is uh, last, minute, last minute questions. That's what we're going to go with. Um, so, yeah, anything to report on, mate? How's your week been? How's, how's life? Anything that you want to you say live on the pod? Not really. Everything's going, going well. Um, training's going all right. Back's holding up somewhat. Um, yeah, generally all good. Like I say every week in my, uh, my off-season update is very, very much the same every single week. I'm eating more. I'm, I'm gaining weight. I'm feeling good. Um, what am I, 225 pounds now? Pretty much averaging that, um, which is still feeling all right. Uh, obviously, I spoke before about doing a pre-prep diet pretty soon. I'm still not set on exactly Can we where. Can we stop calling it a pre-prep diet? It's just a diet. It's just yeah. like because it's not pre-prep diet. Well, like you're, it's like the reason that I'm doing it is because I will be prepping. If I wasn't going to be prepping, I wouldn't be dieting. You know what I mean? Yeah. The reason for the but diet. It's not even is that I'm in a better like, spot for when it comes to prep. But it's so long away. Prep is for you. Not so like, really, if it was, a, it, imagine having long, pre-workout. Nah, imagine having pre-workout the day before you train. Yeah, you're having a pre-prep diet. 11 months away from starting prep i'm not dieting yet. <laughs> but, no i know but like it's when you think about 11 months it's like that's literally like oh, i'm having my pre-workout meal is it a rest day today yeah i'm actually deloading i'm training it's not it. the same in that's any way doing. that's just because pre is the same word it's a completely different mm-hmm. concept mm-hmm. i'm not sure mate i'm disagreeing with that i'm gonna disagree that's i think a pre-prep good. diet would be like at the latter end of the year like we're talking there's probably about six months five four or five months afterwards until a prep i think a pre-prep like you're just dieting because you're a fat mess just admit it I'm say it live on the pod yet. i'm not even dieting yet no, but you, will be. You, will be. you can't get food in you're struggling to get food in your appetite's gone your, your, your blood glucose is in the bin your blood glucose is in the bin. Mate, you don't even struggling. know what blood glucose is. You won't know what the score would What's be. Blood glucose? I'll tell you the score, you'll be like, I don't know what that means. Oh, yeah, I'd be like between, like, as long as it's like more than 0.1, that's fine, isn't it? As long as it's above seven, you're all right. No. Um, okay, fair enough. Th- because <laughs> the reason that I call it that is literally because I wouldn't otherwise, I wouldn't be diet, I wouldn't need to diet at the minute. So the only benefit. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, need, to, you wouldn't need to diet. <laughs> I don't need to diet. <laughs> Well, I don't. Realistically, I don't. The only time that I actually need to need to diet is if I'm going to compete. I could live like this easily. Yeah. I'm just a fat mess, but I don't mind yeah. it. Like, I feel I feel good. <laughs> and my training's good. But the only benefit of that diet, or the only reason that I'm going to do that diet, is so that I am in a better position when it comes to actually prepping in what uh, twelve months from now. But that's not to say that I'm dieting now. For all you know, I might no. diet till the end of the year. I'm doing a very similar thing with Niall and basically just sort of playing it by week by week until he gets yeah. told to fuck off and told to diet. And I'm pretty much doing the same with myself. Yeah. Like I've not been told. My body isn't fighting me at all in terms of eating this amount of food and training. No, no. You know, not at all. It's been 70-odd weeks of, of pushing up. So I will keep getting away yeah. for it, with it for as long as I can. But then I also don't want to go and keep going and going and going until it gets till early next year. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm 300 pounds. I should probably diet now. Yeah. Three hundred pounds. Three hundred pounds. I'm not far peak, off. peak off season. I'm not far off. <laughs> Imagine 100, 120 pound prep. What have I got? I've got? I've only really got seventy five pounds to go. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's easily that's, doable. It's not far off what I've put on already, so I'm not that far off. Obviously, you're fifty percent there. Fifty percent there on this game. Thing. I might just keep putting off. Yeah. Competing. Just keep putting it off year after year after year until I actually am three hundred pounds, and then I'll diet from there. Well, the vast majority of people do that anyway, but they don't even get to 300 pounds. They just put off competing. They say every year, I'm competing next year. Don't compete. That's what it is. So, got, got an injury. Ah, yeah, next creeps up. yeah, or yeah, you know what? I'm going to compete next year. I'm going to tell everybody I'm competing. Nah, I don't want to compete. I'll compete next year. That's what it'll be. So, yeah, you never know. I actually, mate, believe it or not, um, I added up. So, I told you before, like, um, you do the same, I'm guessing. So, do you, like, I don't weigh my foods out every day. No, I weigh my foods out. I don't enter it in yeah. on my fitness pal. So, I don't actually track macros in a sense. And uh, in the last, like, few weeks, I've been like, uh, the last few weeks, I had a food increment 
And I've had like two or three that I've literally just wrote on my sheets, an extra 25 carb here through this. And I was like looking and I hadn't added up all my macros uh, and to my total calories. And I was saying to Sanaa, I was like, my food feels very high, like very, very high. And I was like, but I'd like to know what my macros are. So I went back onto the last time that I tracked my food and just changed everything that I'm doing now because the foods have stayed fairly similar. And it was like 5,900 calories on training days. And I was like, God, it is high. Yeah, like I don't think I've ever... Yeah, no wonder I'm fat. It was like, wow, God. Yeah, it was um, five nine uh, when it comes to cows. I think it was like nine eighty carb, I think sixty eight fat, and then like three fifteen or three twenty protein. And I was like, God, I am. You know, mate, I'm, you got I'm eating a lot of protein. Well, no. To be fair, there's, it was already like three hundred grams, and if, when you're having nine hundred plus grams of carbohydrates, um, there's a lot of trace no. anyway. And then you also add in. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, th- I don't want it to any higher. Like, if it's any higher, I need to go to the toilet 12 times a day. Right now, the one time a day, I'm surprised. Everything's still what's, like, okay. what's your amount of complete protein per meal? Oh, it's like maxed out pretty much per meal. That's the reason why. Like, it's five meals at, like, I think literally between, like, 38 and 40 from complete sources. And then, if I'm not mistaken, it was, like, literally, it's just trace protein from, like, that's what carries into to the other meals because when your carbs are high it's going to be high You're 120 but, grams yeah. of trace protein no it might be it might be it's like 40 it's either it's between like i said that in minimum 38 that was the last time i looked i haven't gone on to my fitness pal to be like oh, i need to make this i need to make that it's literally uh, the last few weeks i'm like, oh, to obsess over it though, isn't it? Uh, in the past i used yeah. to absolutely obsess over it and i'd be like every yeah. single meal has to have exactly 40 grams of complete protein and I have, well, I have three bagels. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have I have three bagels a day, so that's like twenty four grams already. You know, and there's a lot of other proteins that I have from, like I said, carbohydrates. And like for example, I think it's also including like my EAs as well into my protein into there, which I'm not like if I was to look at it, that might not be directly what I'd be looking at for protein. Do you know what I mean? Like I obviously can't count it, but yeah food's high. Food's very high. Training non training days. I've training days. I'm, I'm all right because my food choices are relatively okay. Non training days. I get to like. The last two meals, and I'm a bit like, oh, I don't really want to eat. But my rest it's got to be done. Nice, because the food's not. I think yeah. I'm like three and a half thousand calories on a rest day. Yeah, yeah. I think mine like four, three, four, four. So, what's your calories on train days? Is it? It's not. It's like, is it high fours? Just it? yeah, just under five thousand. I don't yeah. move. The only thing. Like my steps, like yeah. what my steps are, six to eight thousand on average every week. I, I don't really move so obviously when i was eating like six thousand calories back in the day it's because my steps were like twenty thousand yeah. pt in and doing classes and stuff so yeah like it feels that's why i think that's one thing that's why i find this amount of food so easy to get in like i don't struggle at all but it's obviously yeah, still food high. it's obviously enough because I, i've still been gaining weight or every time that i haven't gained weight i'll I put food up when i've needed to i haven't really increased food in quite a while but body weight just gradually yeah. sort of trickled up um but yeah, I think that's probably why I'm finding it so easy. Because I remember back in the day when I was having to eat like 6,000 calories to even maintain weight. And I was like, what the fuck? This is horrible. I felt like I was eating all the time and I was drinking like thick oat shakes that I was making like smoothies while I was PT and then like yeah. shitting myself five times a day. Like, it was horrendous. But was like, <laughs> yeah, I knew that. But now my digestion's like the best it's ever been. Well, this whole off season it is. Um, and like yeah, yeah you know, you shit yourself without having to well that's what it was i was eating like six thousand calories but i was just shitting it all out whereas now i'm eating yeah. just under five thousand but i'm actually utilizing the food my nutrient partitioning is elite because i'm so lean see that's that's why i don't need to diet it's because you go for a five minute walk after every meal mate yeah that's what it is I've done, that, I've done that ever since my uh, my show because i'm so disciplined yeah yeah and you also you also take metformin on a nightly basis because it's allowed in natural federations yeah, anything that's, that's is, allowed, anything that's allowed, you've got to take it. Turkesterone, you taking that, bro? Yeah, I think I'm taking any anything that I can get away with that, that I won't get told off for. Yeah, and then eventually when it gets banned, you'll be like, oh no! I mean, I knew I was only taking it when it was natural. Yeah, you, so. you can't, you can't, they can't ban you for that. No, definitely not. Definitely not. But yeah, other than that, mate, I don't think there's really too much else to report. Sanaya uh, wants to go on holiday in six weeks. So she said to me the other day, she was like, are you going to diet for it? And I was I like, you'd already no. booked it. Have you not already booked it? No. Sanaya, so no, you're not booked it, have you? No, because we're waiting for you. Yeah, waiting for me. So get, to give the green light, the green light, and then 
like I said, I'm not going to, I don't know. We'll see. I'm not dieting for it. No chance. I'm just going to turn up into like 35 degree heat, sweaty and fat. It was going to be you don't fantastic. Need to diet for it. What does it matter? No, I don't, I don't, give, a, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I literally wouldn't care. Like, I'd, I'd turn up, I'd be like, uh, I'll put my wife beater, white vest on, and I'd be walking around like a fat slob in shorts and, and, and sandals. And I'd be like, oh, sliders. And I'd be sandals. like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just imagining like the classic fat dad, you know, who just doesn't care. And he's like probably in good shape like 20 years ago. He just literally a wife beat a vest, a few stains on there. And tells everyone pissed on the fly. Tells everybody that he was, oh, I used to be in good shape. I used to I used to deadlift 300 kilos. Mate, you did it once for two reps what? and then you nailed it the week after. Yeah. Nah, nah, I used to do yeah. 300 kilos. Yeah. Exactly. And he's the kind of guy who's always, like, if you think about it, like those kind of guys that they exist. And it would be like, uh, they, they'd be telling all their mates, oh, yeah, on that, that trend, I was on that trend once. Yeah, I fucking didn't that even trend. feel it. Didn't even feel it. Yeah, that trend, I was on that trend once. Uh, it is funny. It is funny. But yeah, nothing else to really report. Uh, everything else is in a good spot. Most likely, we'll probably be doing uh, a deload in the next week or two, I'd say. Like, my training's been all right. It's been good, but I can tell I'm starting to run out a little bit of steam. So the last thing last week, and the stronger I get, the heavier I get. And it's almost where it's noticeable that I'm at lifetime levels of strength because I get like a week of training after a deload where I'm pretty wank, then a real good three weeks. And then I'm like, right, that fifth week is a bit meh. And then the, the sessions have been sound. Like we've trained really well, haven't we? Like, but it's, I think it's been six weeks at this point, if I'm not mistaken, since the last de- deload. So I think we'll just see. We'll play it by ear. I always feel like with us, well, I know with me, post deload it can take me a few weeks to feel like i'm back into my sort of rhythm yeah and then i feel mint for a few weeks and then all of a sudden it's like i feel shit so it's like it hits me like a train yeah. out, out of nowhere but i can still almost like know when it's going to happen it's like i can assess the, the time frame but like we've been saying we had that deload and then it sort of disrupted our rhythm a little bit and we sort of got yeah. back into the swing of things a couple of weeks down the line which was what a yeah. week probably two weeks ago and then hmm. Now we've had some really good weeks of training and now it's starting to sort of take its toll again. So I think potentially next time we look at, maybe look at the D-volume approach because when we take a D-load, we always struggle coming back into it. Yeah. It's like we need, uh, we need to alternate or something like that. So like every other time we have a D-load or a D-volume, we alternate between the two. We could play around with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult no, though, and it, the thing is, like, you're never going to be the exact same level of fatigue each time. Like, this is why we say that, you know, prescribing a deload every single five weeks is obviously, if you auto regulate it, it's it's usually going to be more beneficial. But then also, you could argue, you know, when you say right every five weeks you're going to take one, even if you're not trashed, you know when it is. But I would argue, like, yeah. for us, now sometimes five weeks in we're like this is exactly where I'm, I'm absolutely flying and i'm feeling amazing and my training oh, if you yeah if you hit the ground running after a deload mate five weeks in four weeks afterwards you're fucked like if we were to like we said we had a week or two where we were like i'm not cooking on gas yet like i don't feel good and it's only really been the last two weeks where we've been like yeah this is good like all our sessions the last two weeks have been very very good i'd say you know like everything's been progressing but if we were to I've nailed it from that get-go from the deload. We would have been like, shit, probably by now we would be redlined and be like, we need to pull back. Where in reality, we're like, well, we had a week or two where we were just getting ourselves back into it. And this isn't to say like for the people listening, like it was bad, it was bad sessions. It wasn't, it was just not our usual snappy selves. It was just like, oh, this feels a little bit, I feel a little bit more tired here. It's a bit unusual. I don't, I'm not getting myself switched on as well. And like I was saying to you, like on the deadlifts, like I had to almost reset my mindset a little bit where I was like, I'm thinking too much. I'm taking too much of my time away. And I'm just, be, just going in thinking I've, I'm stronger than I was last week. I'm going to beat what I did last week, you know, <laughs> and almost breaking it down to the basics. So, yeah, I definitely think, like I said, well, if we were always regulating it by literally every five weeks, six weeks, it'd be silly. Some weeks we'd be like, fucking hell, we need to. And other weeks we'd be like, well, we're in a real good rut. Like right now, like why would we pull back if our training's been very, very good for the last week or two? You know, <laughs> like the last two weeks have been spot on. Why would we need to pull back now? You know? That's what I mean. Like, look, even when you auto-regulate it, it's, it's very difficult to auto-regulate it perfectly and know exactly when to pull back and ex- exactly how long you need, whether you need a deload and to take you know days off or whether you just need a devolume or 
or what it may be like it is difficult and obviously you know we have the same with our clients like i say this to my clients all the time like you're not gonna we're not gonna be able to perfectly perfectly it's sort of estimate exactly when you're going to feel trashed so we can't i'd much rather not just guess but then also you know you need to be aware of all the signs and sort of i'll explain those to people and so you've got you've got to be aware of those and communicate when you're experiencing those but even then you know we'll have weeks where we feel a bit trashed but then we might push through and, and the following week we feel amazing we didn't need a deload or anything we just had a week where we just felt a bit off you know maybe we've got yeah an injury that's playing up a little bit and it frustrate it's a bit frustrating or you know maybe we had a, a couple of poor nights sleep for whatever reason like, and this is obviously why you know all those other variables that we keep on on top of are massively important so that we don't you know it's rare that we have those poor sessions but yeah i think you know i don't think you can ever master it like for yourself or for a client like obviously the more you work with a client the more you learn about when to sort of keep pushing them and when to pull them back and you know i've obviously with working with people for longer and also just you know doing this job for longer being a coach for longer like you get better at it and and, and noticing the signs even when people don't which i, I find quite cool when yeah. i do that and i'm like right i can tell they're fatigued but they don't realize it. and i'll say right i'm gonna give you four days off here and then afterwards like what the fuck i feel amazing and it's like yeah it's because yeah. you're fucked but you just didn't realize it or you didn't tell me you, yeah you can usually tell like just a voice note will be a little bit yeah. more monotone or they'll mention something like instead of saying mate the session yesterday was fantastic they'll be like yeah session was all right it was good yeah it was all right like um kind of got to, a little bit draggy towards the end and like stuff like that they wouldn't even notice you know and you'll be like okay cool let's, let's pull back especially when someone's on it every day and you know it wasn't where they had poor sleep or their routine was poor like you will have a few clients who like every rotation it's like yeah nine out of ten sessions ten out of tens the second ones are seven you're like okay why? That's it. I, have, <laughs> I have clients like that where like they literally they'll, have, they'll rate their sessions and I, I have it as like yeah. unreal great good and so on so there's like five different different sort of scenarios yeah, yeah. and if it's anything for some people if it's anything less than unreal i'm like deload <laughs> because they log, <laughs> they log every session as unreal and if it's not i'm like there's obviously yeah. something wrong um or if they, if it's yeah, like yeah. every session's unreal or great and then they put one that's good but again everything's been spot on i'm like yeah deload um but yeah it's yeah. It's even like I say, you know, that's it's, it's it's very difficult to assess that for yourself. It's not always going to be easy and just go, oh, I've had one average session. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take a deload. Like, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a skill, but I think it's forever changing as well because you you might know, for example, you might have a client who every six weeks you know, right, they are pretty much trashed every six weeks. So we know that it's going to be for them about that that time frame. If you we then know. change, we know. Yeah, well, yeah, we know. But let's say then we change their programming Ooh. where we're prioritizing a body part that's maybe a bit more fatiguing. So we've been prioritizing delts and arms. Now we're prioritizing quads and glutes. Yeah. They're probably going to be fucked yeah. a bit earlier because those body parts are going to be more yeah. demanding to, to train. So there's all these things that it's impossible. This is like I say, you know, why I'm not a fan of saying, right, every exactly five weeks you're going to take a deload or whatever it may be because things change all the time. And also, you know, again, unless you've got a client, which you know, a lot of our clients are on it with everything, but you know, they still, have a life they still might have a weekend where they go for a weekend away and their food's not been as good or whatever it may be so though that week following that even though it's two weeks post deload that week's been a bit of a or at least the first few sessions that week weren't great because sleep's not been great and food's not been great for the past three days that doesn't mean that then we go oh you need a deload even though they had one a week ago like i think people are quick to sort of jump to that solution straight away that's the only solution if they've had a, a couple of poor sessions or they're feeling a bit tired it's like they they jump to that solution like we say we we have yeah. clients where when everything is nailed and there's no reason why they should be feeling fatigued and it's again if it's been eight weeks or so since the last one and they say you know, hear it in the voice or they say you know oh this session wasn't actually very good and they've not said that for eight weeks that's when you can be like oh, okay cool you know you can sort of tell for them pretty well but it's never going to be that for everyone or even for us like I say I, mean, I don't even feel like that a lot of the time yeah I think we started off like come two three years ago we just push on and push on and push on and push on and uh, we'd be like oh, I feel horrendous like I, I feel awful but then we just keep trading and we go through it yeah. and then eventually we'd be like right out. like and then eventually get to a point where 
like I also think as well it can work the other way so many people they look for one sign and it's like like we what you said um in regards to like you'll have a bit of maybe a bad week or you've had maybe one night's poor sleep you don't have to correlate that to a deload and unfortunately to get the the perfect balance it's never going to be there and you can either have the perfect transition where you go okay cool yeah I'm in a um I'm in a good spot and let's just keep pushing on um I'm a little bit fatigued is what it is and then you have the other individuals who are like oh my god I my, my sleep quality was down by five percent last night and I struggled to switch on for one of my sets today yeah. I need to deload and in reality it's like no you need to embrace the fact that when you're getting stronger you're not going to feel amazing you know you know like in a progressive training meso you're going to feel pretty beaten up the vast majority of times and again like having that balance like I'm not going to say either one is better but I I, put, I would personally say like as you get more experience as many deloads as you go through yourself you'll get better at actually knowing what when you actually need one that's for sure but I'd also say as well, it's better to be more cautious than just be reckless. I think in a scenario like that, you know, and just keep trashing yourself. And that's coming from me and Finn, who would yeah, literally think, trash ourselves constantly. I think it's very similar to the debate, if you want to call it a debate, um, that we've spoke about before, where it's like, well, what would you rather have? A client that trains insanely hard, but they're maybe yeah. not that accurate, or they're maybe not nailing a few other variables, or a client who doesn't train very hard, but they train with insane accuracy and their, you know, their aura readings, their readiness is 99 every day. Like we've said before, you'd rather have someone who pushes himself more, trains harder. Anybody could have their, their yeah. readiness. Well, not 99, yeah. but anybody could have high readiness by not training very hard ever. Yeah. Anybody can progress yeah. every single week. Always ready. Hard. Not great. Yeah. Always ready to not train that hard. Cause, Cause you so don't train. Ready yeah. to not train. Hey, man, I'm so ready reps and reserve to them it's like we've said before though like pro <laughs> progressing your training it, 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 it is funny it is funny but yeah no it makes sense yeah progressing okay. progressing your training is is very easy if you're progressing at 40 percent of your 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 optimal level or your your peak performance level if you're constantly at 40 percent, of course you're going to progress yeah, you go in and you, you I, if we if we were to go in and train at 40 percent, we'd progress for years until we then got back to the point yeah. where we're, we're training hard again or we're training at our limit again. I think that's what a lot of people do is like, oh, I'm progressing every week. It's like, yeah, but you're still not training anywhere near where you need to be. Yeah, you're progressing, but you're still, you could be doing another 50 kilos on that lift. Yeah, but I'm progressing it. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> it's still too easy. Yeah, no, definitely. I said to uh, to, J to Jacob yesterday uh, at Ebo, he did the, um, you know, that like pendulum yeah. V-score oh, hybrid. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and like I, he didn't even want a spot, but I was like walking by and I was like, oh, I'll give him a spot. And he got five kilos up and eight reps up, and it was a really, really good set. Like, legitimately, probably one of the best sets I've seen from him. And he was afterwards, he was like, mate, that was like six or seven reps up. He didn't count like while he was in the set. And he came over to me and he was like, I was eight reps up and five kilos up. And I was like, that's good. I was like, and you do train hard. I was like, outside of those sets, I was like, I see your sets, but clearly you're holding yourself back. If you can go five kilos up and get seven or eight extra reps just because I'm there, imagine like, that goes imagine. to show like, hey, yeah, I said, imagine all the other things that that's affecting. I was like, the one set I'm here for, you're getting more reps. I, think I was like, that says to me that there might have been progression from last week in relation to the week before, but you're probably not going into the sets with the same level of intensity. When it gets hard, you're probably bottling it a little bit. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> it's like, again, it's hard. it depends on the movement that, because I guarantee that wouldn't happen yeah. if it was like a chest press. Like if he was doing a Smith machine press, no. like that wouldn't have happened. He'd have probably got one rep up. Yeah. But with yeah. something like that, machine based i don't know obviously what yeah. his, like his breathing pattern was like maybe he was spending longer at the top maybe he wasn't but still i think it's very easy yeah. on yeah. something like that like it's like very similar on a leg press yeah like if we were to put even the clients that send videos if we were to put a lot of them through a set actually there they'd probably get five reps up and be like what the fuck and it's like yeah. it's because you know you 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 just basically I think the the main the most important thing is like they just don't you don't realize you've got another one or you, you don't go for it. Um, you sort of just yeah. expect that because that last one was slow, you think oh, I'm done. But more often yeah. than not, if you just stay calm, breathe, brace, go for another one, you probably get it, and then you do that again, you do that again. Obviously, without taking the piss with your breathing, is that what he was doing? Did he take ten breaths between every rep? No, it was pretty good. It was, um, I think it was continuous. I think it was like a 15 repper, continuous up to like 10 or 11. And then it was like two or three breaths. And like I said, it was a good set, but it was one of those where I said to him, like, I would take that as a bit of a kick in the teeth because I was like, that was good, 
but that says to me that you're easily influenced by just me being here. So, which is like, for me, it's like, it's like, oh, it's quite cool. But then in addition, I'd be like, that's not good because I want you to be training better. Yeah. So I said to him, I was like, we need, we need to assess and properly like have a think, are you actually putting everything into it? Because it's all well and good training hard and screaming and shouting. And, and like for 17, he does train well. But I was like, your level of accuracy needs to be better. Your level of intense, intensity and more so intent could be a lot better de demonstrated by the one fact that you went heavier and got seven or eight reps up <laughs> it's, it's pretty absurd but yeah do you want to uh, get into the questions mate we haven't got too mate, many have we i've just uh, realized no i've just realized i've got loads from last week that i didn't go through. okay fair enough i think I, I think i had a fair few from last week but i did, i looked through them earlier and i almost just couldn't remember which ones i got back to so like i didn't want to be saying finn did we do this one did we do that one you know right. so i'll go on them That's and exactly I'll, if there's any that stick do. out I didn't get back to. yeah right. right go for it mate i don't think we did to be fair, i don't think we did many of these big balwa aj balwa versus big bertolini in a fight who wins we didn't do that no we didn't do that will's taller isn't he you know so i'd go will did you see an a italian it was on Will's story today. They were all getting their legs waxed and uh, Will didn't even flinch. He was like, sat there like, oh, is that mm. it? So based on oh, that, yeah. based on his pain threshold, Will, I bet in his head, I bet he, he approached it like a top set and he was just that switched yeah. on that he just didn't even feel it. And then afterwards he went home and he was like, oh, <laughs> started, started crying. Crying, started crying during it. it was <laughs> yeah, he was like, is that it? Dr. Avoid's <laughs> here. Just a tear dripping yeah. down his cheek. He's like, is that, is that it? <laughs> is that it? No. Dr. A voice there afterwards right. and he's like, hey mate, yeah, it was it. Right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, can't train legs for the next, oh, to be fair, he has got a, a knee injury, but can't train legs for months because he's had him waxed. Um, yeah. yeah, so we're going to say Big Bertolini. Sorry, AJ. Yeah, uh, keep going, mate. My, uh, my Instagram archive is isn't loading, so from feel free. Bulking since birth. He says he dropped a 20 kilo yep. plate on his big toe and broke it. What's the worst injury you've had from training? So first of all, mate, sorry to hear that. It's not ideal. Speedy, reco speedy recovery on the, uh, on the toe, mate. Yeah. What's the worst flowers? In, in the gym. I've never had anything go pop, luckily. Um, I've been quite lucky um, to, for nothing to go pop while I'm training. Uh, my patella tendonitis, pretty bad. My left knee last year, that was, the, that was the worst, if I'm honest. That was definitely the worst. Um, my, when I destroyed my lower back on the RDO, you know, that 250 RDO where I lost tightness and had two reps in reserve. And it took me about 60 seconds to get out of my car and in my car for about a month. That was fantastic. I, I had no working lower back. Um, other than that, nothing really. My, my right quad tendon's very painful, but no way near as bad as my patella tendonitis last year. So it's like, well, it is what it is. And other than that, I've not really had any major setbacks or injuries luckily like in the actual gym what about yourself mate mine was, mine was very similar like niggles that are frustrating but manageable to train around like my back's been an issue for like nearly two years now but it's not well at times it's been a, a, a big enough issue to have to really work around it but sometimes it's manageable to just train as normal so I can't really say that that's like a horrendous injury it's just frustrating more than anything but I would much yeah. rather a broken toe than my back. Yeah, <laughs> like, same. mate, I have all my toes broken. And as long as I, I can, I might not be able to train legs for the time that they all recover. But yeah, man, Ronnie Coleman broke his toe and did like an 800 pound squat the following day or something. He was like, my yeah, quad toe broke, broke my all toes. I'm saying if I broke all my toes. But I've, I've said this before, I'd rather have an injury like that. That's like an impact injury, which you, you have right here's a certain amount of time that it's going to take for it to recover you need to rest it but you'll be able to do, do it you know you'll be able to back back to, to normal in six weeks eight weeks 12 weeks whatever it may be I'd, I'd kind of rather that than constantly having like my back flare up and then sometimes be okay and then sometimes be worse so that's it is annoying but yeah probably that like I, i'm the same as you i haven't had anything serious i haven't had any sort of acu uh, like acute sort of impact bang straight away kind only of. chronic yeah, just did you ever have any like injuries during during football or anything like that? Anything that went like you got snapped? No, mate, I think I, yeah, I never really got injured playing. I, I got um, I had like scars. I got kicked it's this side. I got kicked in the head, and I got this was like three days before my sister's wedding as well. So I got all my eye like split open here. You can kind of see the scar. 
oh, is that what that's from? I always wanted to ask you because it looks fucking ugly as anything. And I was like, I don't want to say anything. That's your, that's what I think about your face, mate, but I just didn't, don't dare ask. No, I was always looking at it and I'm like, God, that scar's awful. No wonder every time you go from the, like, you take a photo, it's on the other side. Mate, that's why it's the left side. side. This is my left side, my good oh, side. Yeah. Look at that. how bad your other side must be then. Yeah, Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got a scar in the middle of my head here. That's from my mate, Kyle, that threw a brick at my head when I was a kid. Uh, you say big win. You would have jumped up. But I, so we might as well tell this story while we're here. This was, there was a skip at the, the local park. For some reason, they had a skip there that had loads of rubble in it at the local park. And obviously, mm. as we were kids, we played like, we, we were like, oh, amazing. This is like a little, you know, a new, a new thing to play on. Uh, and there was a, like a, a corner of a brick, like h- half a brick. And he spun round. He was like, you know, what, what is it? You know, discus. <laughs> Yeah, the shot put oh, on discus. discus yeah. yeah, you know, like, yeah, those. He basically, basically like, discus. He discused it, God knows how many meters. And I was like, I don't know what I was doing. I was doing something. And then I stood up. I was like playing about, I might have been playing football. I don't know what I was doing. But I was like 20 meters away. I stood up, bang. Mate, there's blood. Blood was gushing out of my head like projectile vomit. It was literally like, pff, 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 mate, it was so scary. Like I sprinted home. Luckily, I live like 30 seconds away. Sprinted home. My sister was doing a book, a book stall with one of her mates outside of our house. And I got blood all over the book. Blood all, all over the books. Mate, honestly. Wow, you go. My sister, sister, my sister, sister looked at me. Room. My sister looked at me and just went like that. She just put her, hand, her head in her hands and didn't know what to do. She like panicked. And then my sister's mate, luckily, wasn't as panicked. And she got my other sister who was inside. And then she like got kitchen towel and like told me to like put pressure on my head and that my mum and dad were out my mum and dad had to rush home and take me to hospital and when I got into the hospital they were like yeah like straight away they were like get him in because he's fucked but there was like mate god knows how much blood I lost it was horrendous um but yeah shout out to Kyle cheers for that mate um, so yeah I don't know how I got onto that we were talking about injuries, injuries. So I guess that is an yeah. injury but it wasn't in the gym and it wasn't playing football yeah no, nah, fair enough. But it was traumatic. I can still see it now, mate. Literally, was hor- it was horrible. It was like proper. As I was, I was what ten. It shit me right up. Yeah. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even been, Yeah, I might have been about ten, but it was fucking scary. It was horrible. Yeah, I I got quite lucky to be fair. I didn't really do too much that was like that bad. I remember this, like, I, I messed up the ligaments in my knee when I was about four. No, I was older, I was about six. It was like first year, you know, primary school. I was like playing football and my knee like bent backwards. It almost like hyperextended. And it like, I, I, st- I stood up and he did that. And then I like, it hurt really bad, but I just stood up again and I literally did it again. And I fell down and I was like, I can't move. And I literally had like, a, I got took to the doctors. And I remember I was hopping around on like a, on crutches for a few days. I liked it because in assembly, I could sit on a chair and yeah. I was like right at the front. So I felt like I was like, I'm a boy on a chair. You get, that more, was it. You get attention, That's don't you? As a kid, like when I remember when yeah. I, I had yeah. like stitches in my head and uh, you could see it all. Yeah. I went to school the next day and I was like, fucking look how yeah. hard. You thought you all the right. teachers were like, oh, you all right? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, be, I'll be all right. I'll get there. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'll make it. <laughs> I guess I'll be all right. Yeah, fair enough. Right. Um, I've actually got a few. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, got got the... I've got to go through mine. No, no, these are from last week, mate. How many bagel thins can you fit on your dick? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that from? <laughs> Uh, Big Fat Bailey, you know the guy that was at Normanton the other day, and uh, he broke the oh, yeah. pull down. Yeah, is his name yeah, actually yeah. Big Fat Bailey? That's his Instagram, Big Fat oh, Bailey. Right, yeah. That's what you were calling him. <laughs> no, no, Big Fat Bailey. Big uh, Fat Bailey. Bagel thins. Bagel are we thins. On, are we yeah, on about bagel. Flaccid or erect? Um, let's go both. Flaccid. I'm flaccid. Sure. Zero. Zero. <laughs> Zero bagel thins. Nothing. I'd say, We're not yeah. on. I don't know. It'd just fall straight off, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd just slip off the end. I want to know something funny, mate. And uh, this is, fortunately, yeah, I always say I'm a grower, not a shower. You know, when I got my tan by Nicola, she had to give me a smaller sock. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah, that's what she gave me one. And I was like, I said, Nicola, if I'm honest, I don't think this is gonna this is gonna stay. And then she was like, No, it'll be fine. They'll, they'll, they'll be fine. And I put it on. I went, Nicola, it's not staying. And she was like, Okay, she gave me like a smaller one, or like she gave me like a something to tie, like a you know, like an elastic band. And I was like, Cheers. She gave you a child's one. 
<laughs> no, yeah, the only, it's the only one that she, she tans are like kid when he does like when he goes out or whatever. <laughs> so, so, like, how the one she gave me, like, was yeah, snug. yeah, no, she said to me it was like they, they were a little bit bigger than usual, that's what she did say, but she had to make it smaller. That's what, like, they say. that's what they say to be nice. Oh, it's we've given you the extra large, sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, that wouldn't surprise me to be fair. Like I've got no shame. If someone was to say, like, what's it like flaccid? I'd be like, like, I'm a girl. I'm a girl oh, half mate. the time. Sometimes I look at mine when like I'm especially when I'm cold and I think, what is wrong with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same. Literally, it's, 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 if I was to get like, you know, if you were to pull my trousers down in the middle of Ultraflex, <laughs> I would literally just be like, this is it. I would literally hide it quick. I'd run home in embarrassment. I'd go to the car crying. Or I'd try and I'd try and get erect and be like, yeah, it's not that bad now. It's not that yeah, bad. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd look around and be like, Cuba, don't. Honestly, it's bigger. Stay there. <laughs> Cuba, wait. I'll show you. <laughs> God, it's bigger. It's bigger. <laughs> wait what for it. Like. Wait. Just wait. It'll happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, bagel so- things. Placid, none, erect, a few. A few, yeah. A few halves, maybe yeah. not a few whole. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, I don't have bagel things. I'm a big I'm a big lad. I have I have big ones. Although he's a big lad, he's big yeah. fat Rayleigh. You'd expect him to have uh, Exactly. Yeah. I'm surprised he even know bagel things in his repertoire. Yeah. But hey ho. Hey ho. Um so, you'll go, mate. This is from Kieran Daly. He says, Has Reese yep. been let out of the doghouse after he said she'll take all the help she can get? Um, no, so now I knew I was joking. Mm. It's not what you've told me. Yeah, no, she didn't talk to me for the whole night after that. Please she cut this part out of the podcast. <laughs> um, no, she, um, to be fair, I think the one thing about Sanaya is she is good for jokes. Like, I think she understood that I was joking. And it's like, it's not, I think comments like that, like, if you fall out over a comment like that, I think that's a bit embarrassing. Like, I think having a good laughing like yeah you could obviously tell it was it was a joke it was set up for quite a good joke how it worked like it wasn't like you just randomly said it out of nowhere and no no, context just said it if i said it randomly yeah if i said it randomly i could understand but nah it was uh so now i don't think she mentioned it she actually said she found it quite funny how pete edited it uh, because i got sent it by a few clients like mate this is class and uh, i was like oh it made the video and i was like yes it made the video i watched it (laughs) and i was like fair enough fantastic Right, next one. Uh, you go. go for it. You go. Okay. Um, when will you, Reese, learn how to achieve optimal uh, cream of rice consistency? Did we say that? I'm not, uh, that was if I'm I, uh, I've just I've done it today in my video, so you'll have to watch my video to work out how to do it. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. I, it's not hard a work out. I just don't care about my cream of rice at this point. Yeah, I think you do. I'll eat it, whatever. You pretend you don't. I may I genuinely do not care. I, I make it during my first meal and I prioritize my first meal more. So if it's ruined, it's like, ah, oh, it is what it is. At least it's done. You know, <laughs> that's what I usually do. Um, when heading into a short, now we already mentioned that, um, best way to build quads without heavy loading, e.g. intensifiers or just increase overall volume. And guess who this is from, Finn? I'll give you one guess. The OG of the podcast. To tender. The tender, he's back. Any chance the tender? Why aven't you asked it on mine? Yeah, and this was from last week. So I take that. I don't know. Me. Yeah, you asked me. Didn't ask you. Cheers. To me now, mate. Obviously, it does. Ruin the day. Yeah. Obviously, so cheers, tender. Cheers, mate. I'm not answering that. You can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so then, I'll ask you. Best way to build quads without heavy loading so to tender why are you not heavy loading you just train like a pussy you want to I think it's because of his, heavy I think it's because of rugby yeah yeah I'm guessing so I'm only, I'm only taking the piss so he's asked intensifiers or just push the volume up um I would say if you're re- like if you're having to like really minimize load then I would look at getting some um like blood flow restricting bands BFR um, yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah. like BFR bands that you can get you can get them on Amazon relatively cheap um, they would be pretty good for doing things like leg extensions. Snare is here. I need to ask Snare, how many bagels, do you, the bagel thins, do you reckon I could fit on my dick? Oh, for fuck's sake. No, no, um, Jack. Bagel thins? Yeah. 
Well, like halves or like full bagel thins. Ah, oh, full bagel thins. Uh, let's um, say let's say flaccid. What do you reckon? What does that mean, flaccid? Not not erect. I don't know. Maybe like four. <laughs> really? No, no chance. I was saying zero. No, no staying on me. And then what about hard? How many do you reckon? Four so full bagel. Hard. Four full bagel thins on a flaccid penis. No chance. Like that thin, right? Yeah, bagel thins are tiny. Yeah. But like four halves. Yeah, four, four halves. halves. So two. Four halves. Four yeah. halves. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Like you're quite a few. Quite a few. You're a grower. Sitting back me up. <laughs> That's what I said. I said that. I was like, grow. I could fit a few. I did the exact same. Thanks, man. Thanks for backing me up. You told what you did to my laptop. No, I didn't. We'll save that for for an after. I gave her a, a fantastic loom video the, earlier, mate. We'll carry on. Um. Yeah, back to the question. What <laughs> show you after the end? In the background, she's not part of the podcast. I'll move out of the way. I'll do this. I'll sit here. There we go. Me to move. Mm, yeah. You're right, to be fair. You can stay. I oh, know she's going that way. Sound. Right, all good. Back to it. Um, yeah, best way to build quads. Um, you said BFR? No, oh, yeah. I was saying that if, if you're really having to limit load, then BFR bands would be, would be beneficial. You could use them for things like leg extensions and even like forms of squats you could use them you could do like high rep goblet squats and things like that depends like i would class that as something you would use if you not if you were like having to work around an injury then that would be beneficial but if it's just like because heavy loading ruins him for rugby then i would say yeah. you can still use like moderate loading and just basically work in higher rep ranges like you don't need to do any low rep work so you don't need to use any Quote unquote, as well. Like, you. I think he probably could have some heavy loading in there if he was to keep the volume of said heavy load very low. I'm pretty sure, as well, like if he was training twice per week, maybe look at like frequency, he could have one lower session, maybe on like a Monday or something, where he goes into his training session maybe at like 80%, match days at 100%, and then maybe has some top up volume spread across the week that's more just general overall volume. But then he still has one day where he can load relatively heavy, but might only be four exercises instead of let's say the usual lower session of like seven or eight you know so i definitely think you could probably be a little bit more optimal and i wouldn't just write off overall loading i definitely think you probably could have some load in there you know and see how things go yeah you know? one thing i would say is like it's very very difficult to especially like if you want to be at a decent level in terms of bodybuilding or building muscle it's very very difficult to do both like play sport at a decent yeah. level like i know he does obviously trains and plays at a decent level like yeah. So the same when I was trying to play football and do both. Like, obviously, it wasn't anywhere near as serious as I am now with training. But even then, mm. like, you've seen some photos where my upper body looks okay. Like you can tell I trained, but my lower body is tiny because I couldn't train legs and yeah. play football Tuesday, Thursday, right. Saturday. The but, Mac on charge. All right. I put the Mac on charge a minute ago. I need my Mac on charge. Thank you. <laughs> so that I just sees, he just comes on, just literally change. Like, I put my Mac on charge. Like, oh, I've done plug that sound. It's only on 20% on a podcast. It's sound. I'll unplug it. Um, but no, yeah, I get what you mean, mate. I remember I actually got one of my first ever clients from a Q&A. This is like 2020. And he told me the reason why he signed up was he asked me a question. Uh, Ant, shout out to Ant. Uh, still coaching him two and a bit years later. And uh, he, I, I remember he basically asked a question and it was like how to balance football and bodybuilding. And I was like, like if you want to be good at either you can't like stop playing football if yeah. you want to and it was quite and he said it was like quite a straight up answer but it was where it put it into perspective like right if he's really serious about his goals it's probably not going to be best in to, to have both but obviously i think rugby you want that that snc you want that kind of conditioning you want that level of kind of muscular challenge should we say that can be created in the gym as well as obviously prioritization regarding training and match play so yeah, it makes sense. Good, cool, a good question, Tender. Keep asking them because you've disappeared off the face of the planet for the last seven or eight months. But literally, a, the, one of the first question holders. You were one of the founders of the podcast when it comes to you the Q and A. He is the OG. We said it last week. I'm sure. He, I'm yeah. sure he listened. That's why maybe he's asked another question. Yeah, this was actually no. This was for last oh, week's podcast, last mate. Week, yeah. yeah. Maybe it was, right. it was your fate. one's mate. It was fate then. So, yeah. you know, you know, a couple of weeks ago when Geo Ashley asked us to wish his mate Dimpsey happy birthday from Germany. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Dimpsey put, asked us a question. No, he's put... Hi, I'm Geo Ashley. He's put, Dimpsey is indeed real. I get my trend from him. 
<laughs> so and he then, knows his demon first. And then, Fuck it out. what's your favourite childhood movie? In the same question. <laughs> <laughs> my trend from him. What's your favourite? God, that right, sums up. Geo, Geo Ashley is, is classic. Yeah. Uh, I wonder who it actually is. Geo yeah. Ashley, why haven't you got a, a profile photo? Will you send us a photo? Yeah. Watch it be Aaron. Of who, what, who? Yeah, watch it will be Aaron, the physio. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, favourite childhood movie? My favourite childhood Ooh. movie is Goal. Santiago Munez. What a legend. Yeah, good. Yeah, Newcastle legend. Mate, I remember Madrid. going to watch that. I think it was the second one. Yeah, it was goal two when he goes to play for Real Madrid. I went to watch that at the cinema. Yeah. And I, I, can't, I, can, I can feel how excited I was for it now. I don't know how little I was, but I was so excited. I went with my grandparents and I was so excited. I remember I was like, I could not wait to go and watch it. And it wasn't as good as the first one. Yeah. Still good. And yeah. then the third one, he's, um, at, he's at the World Cup with Mexico and it's like, come on, just... They should have, oh, they should I don't have, think I watched the third. They should have left it at number yeah. one. The, the first one is class. The second one's decent. Yeah. The third one's pretty poor. Yeah. I genuinely don't think I have. Like, I don't really have a favourite film. I liked iRobot. Will Smith, like that. That was good. Mm. That was a good film. Yeah, that is good. I used to watch... The reason why I liked it is when I was about 11 or 10, whenever I was probably younger. What did you say, Finn? You're, you just went into static, mate. No, I didn't say anything. You went into static. Oh, no. Sonia, would you be able to turn your wife off? <laughs> oh, it sounds like I'm back. Mate, I you think were, there's too much happening. You were there the whole time. It says your internet. You were there the we're whole back. time. Yeah, I think there's a bit too much happening on the old Wi-Fi. That's why the, the YouTube video is getting uploaded right now as well. So, is that yeah. supposed to be up on Saturday? No, no, it's supposed to be up. Um, it was the one that was supposed to be up last Saturday, but I'm just going to upload it this one and then the next one should do Saturday. So it was like midweek. The one didn't come out on the weekend. Okay. But yeah, iRobot, I like that. And when I watched it for the first time when I was about eight, I fell asleep during it. And the next time it was on TV, I was like, I'm going to stay up and watch it. And I fell asleep during that. So clearly for a film that I really liked, I fell asleep during it loads. And eventually it <laughs> took me like six months to watch it all. And I was like, yay, good film. Uh, like so yeah, iRobot, I like that. Sad when his dog dies. Sorry if that's spoiled it for anyone. Wait, what? I robot, mate. You're what? thinking I am legend. Oh, I am legend. That's when his dog dies. That's yeah. sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've watched I robot, the one with the yeah, robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as good as I am legend. Nah, it's better than I robot. So I robot is got a good story. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, the end story is quite cool because the ro- the ro- that robot that has like feelings and a consciousness can like it sees the future in a dream or something. And uh, and they're going to put him down. Sonny, I think his name was. Sonny, you're Clyde. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to put Sonny down. Sonny's actually uh, a robot. uh, It's actually Sonny. Yeah, I haven't watched that in years. But yeah, good film. I like that. Um, Right. Um, I got one from, you know, okay, someone, 90 kg, same amount of creatine, five grams. Uh, Someone, 60 kg, or does it scale? So basically saying, should you take a different amount of creatine based on body weight? Yeah, like if you're a bigger individual. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I there is, there is. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the exact guidelines, but there is like a guideline to go from um, an evidence-based guideline. But generally, like I would just say to everybody, five grams a day. If you are someone that's a bigger individual, then you could definitely get away with more. But you're also probably not going to need more. It's not like oh, you're only taking five, yeah. but you're 120 kilos. You need ten. You don't need ten. Like. Once your yeah. creatine levels are, are saturated, they're saturated. So if you're having five a day or 10 a day, they're going to be saturated anyway. So I wouldn't really overthink it. I would just say, take it consistently. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Uh, do you have any more from last week? I'm on to my yeah, four got, from got the got last minute. More. I've got a few more. Right, go ahead then. This Feel from, free. From go right Miles ahead. Mason he says, thoughts on the whole being too soft will mean you build slow, build muscle slower narrative. He sent me a voice note last week as well. He was basically saying like, do you think people push too high to, to like, do we think some coaches push people too, too high, too fat in a gaining phase where they're not going to actually benefit from pushing up to that amount of weight? Yeah. 
it's, it's very person dependent. Like there, there's going to be a sweet spot for the vast majority of people. I got asked this actually on the questions I did on Sunday. Um, and I said, like, you want to get your body weight to a position where everything is optimal. Sleep is not compromised. Recovery is in a good spot. Um, you can train progressively and um, you're getting good pumps in the gym feel good in the gym with outside of the gym uh, and that's and then as as well as get obviously get your training into a position where it is optimal regarding progression and now unfortunately a lot of people think especially early on in training that that is a maintainable position where you can actually stay relatively lean and in reality you're usually going to be a lot softer than you actually realize because you're looking up at these people who are who have a lot more muscle and they think like oh like uh, they're staying lean in an off season or whatever and some people are naturally going to be uh, in a position where they can stay relatively lean and there's going to be an argument that you can put oh, well, insulin sensitivity where you are like coming out of a maybe a fat loss phase etc it potentially could be better to stay leaner but for the vast majority of individuals i would say unless you are like genetically uh predispositioned to be a leaner individual you'll usually benefit from being a little bit softer than probably what the what you actually think you would be and that's going to be in line with training so yeah i think some coaches probably would push up to too aggressive some people do get a little bit too soft but if you are looking after everything, like I said, usually you are going to be probably a little bit softer than what you actually realise. And that's going to be optimal if everything else is optimal regarding that, like external factors. Yeah, spot on. I think, like you say, especially if you've got a good relationship with a client, like, like again, I'll go back to Niall because we've pushed him up quite heavily and he's put on a lot of weight. Like he's nearly, I think he's like 40, coming up to 40 pounds up. Um, and he wasn't like, post show 40 pounds from 40 pounds up like he was just post mini cut 40 pounds up so he's like put on a lot of weight but in the past probably two three months when he's been around high 180s 190 pounds coming up from like mid to high 150s he's been training his training's been in his best spot he's been feeling good he's been saying that his appetite's fine like he's absolutely flying at the minute so just because visually he's looking soft and we say this in his check-ins every week just because he's visually looking soft doesn't mean we should just pull him back if he was telling me oh, i'm feeling you know really you know sluggish i'm struggling to get the food in um training if his training performance wasn't as, as good as it is then there'd be obviously other factors that are coming into it that are showing us right we probably shouldn't be pushing up to this this current level of body fat but yeah like we said it's completely dependent on the individual and i think being aware of how you feel and also experimenting with it because i'm someone who was always lean like i would be a quote-unquote hard gainer yeah, you know, I, I was always really skinny and even before I went and pushed up before my like last prep, my first prep, like I thought that being at 75, 80 kilos was my sweet spot. And it was like, oh yeah, I feel great yeah. here. And like realistically, I did at the time because I'd never pushed up any more than that. But then when I started pushing my weight up and my strength was flying and I put on quite a lot of muscle in the space of like six months because I just pushed up hard, it was like, oh shit like I've actually been staying leaner than I needed to. And I could have been putting on a lot more muscle over this time if I'd have put myself in a more optimal position. Um, but yeah, it's just what, what I was used to. So I think some people need to actually experiment with it first to see whether or not they do feel better. And more often than not, they'll be like, oh shit, like that's mental how much stronger I feel and the amount of food that I can eat. Um, and like even just yeah. little things like how stable your pressing is going to feel. Like more often than not now, I can't think of the last time we went into a press especially a, a machine press, a, sta a stable press, not a free weight, and didn't think it felt great, really. It's never like, oh, it feels like fucking out, it's going through me, or it's a bit awkward. Like, more often than not, it's just, yeah, that feels that feels good. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I agree. Like, I was, uh, again, even coming out of prep, like, I remember doing, like, stiff legs and, like, RDLs, and I could literally feel, like, my hip bones going against my, like, joggers. Like, that. I felt like there was no fat there. And it was like, I was going into it and I was like, there is absolutely no brace or stability at the bottom. It's like, I'm bracing as hard as I can and 180 kilos is making me like almost curl up into a, like a pretzel. <laughs> I was like, right, this is not optimal. And it took me a good 10 kilos, so like 20, 25 pounds from stage weight to the point where I was like, oh, I actually feel pretty tight in the vast majority of movements. Like just jumping on a hack, I felt like I couldn't brace. Like, and I was bra I braced plenty of times, but I literally was just losing tightness out of the hole. And I was like, this is so weird. But again, and like, it would be cool if I was to be like 
okay, you know what? I'm just going to stay really, really lean. Like I, I stayed relatively tight for a fair, fair amount of time because I didn't eat like a bell end. But I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't need to be this white late. Like, wait, I need to be pushing food up. Like within the first three weeks, I was only like a kilo or so up. And I was like, right, you need to be pushing up more because trading was taking a hit. Well, not taking a hit, but it wasn't to where it would have been is if I, if I was to be of heavier body weight at that point. So it's all going to correlate. And unfortunately, when you don't have a lot of muscle mass, and this isn't to miles, and you say miles, bro, you've got no muscle mass. This, but this is more so a sense of if miles is thinking oh, i'm probably a bit soft it's based off maybe the fact that you might not have a real ridiculous level of muscle mass and he's going to look softer as a result of it i was saying the same to jacob yesterday we went through some poses i was like you're 17 yeah you're soft but you could be a lot softer like you could be a lot softer you're not at the point where i'm thinking god this is bad <laughs> like it's just you don't have enough muscle mass to carry it at the same time so you could be heavier which is going to correlate to better training potential which is going to correlate to more muscle mass so yeah um got asked today in the um or do you want to do your questions from last week mate just so we can get them boxed off yeah um my mum asked when we're gonna see finn fringe down reese fringe up oh do i do it next week i need to put some stuff in my hair my hair's my to be fair i think this week's all right i think it's probably the highest it's been for me and lowest for, for you there all we right. go very very short oh yeah do you want to send that to, to, do you want to take a photo and send it to Penny? No, I'll just tell her to watch the podcast. <laughs> Dude, hey, your hair is up. You've got, uh, you got a quiff. I know, I've pushed it up, mate. Look at that. Um, I don't think I've, I don't think we covered this, but, uh, you know, Oren, um, one of my old clients. Who sat he asked, you? He asked questions quite a lot. Yeah, he sat me. Uh, cheers for that, Oren, mate. Um, so he asked, uh, say if everything's progressing and you add a set, this also progresses. You add another. Recovery is still spot on. Is there a downside to increased volume if it's above normal? Um, not quote unquote normal, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, also, oh, oh. any downsides to adding in some calves on a rest day as I'm in the bike to do uh, in the bike in the gym to do bike. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in the bike. Uh, no, 100. percent You could add calves on a rest day. And yeah. I think the question that you've had there, you basically need to assess. There is no, there is no such thing normal. as normal, normal yeah. volume. I think nowadays, if you like, there are more than two sets. It's yeah, like wow, everybody you know? thinks you can only do two sets. And realistically, yes, the sort of top set, back off set rationale makes sense. And obviously, we've spoke about it a lot in terms of you know, doing a heavier load and getting better at then being able to move heavier loads at higher rep ranges and turn in sort of your top set into your back off set sort of repetitively if possible but that doesn't mean that you can't have a third set or a fourth set like especially on some isolations like you know you have like three four sets on laterals at times i do on, on laterals like because it's a small body part that's going to recover well obviously arm training like for me i don't have a lot of volume but if they were weak i would i have some clients that have a shit ton of arm volume because their arms yeah. aren't very good they train arms every day pretty much um yeah. same with like calves you could have you know calf volume could go pretty high and you're probably still going to be progressing it but some yeah. bigger body parts more demanding body parts to train like you know things like quads things like your back um you're probably not going to want to go crazy high but also you've got to assess well how much can i recover from how much can i still progress with and that would be classed as your mrv if you like your maximal recoverable yeah. volume try and find where that is run with that for however many weeks you can or even work up to that during a mezzo or whatever it may be and then if you feel like it's starting to you're starting to stall in terms of progress then pull back either by devoluming so you're obviously coming down to a lower end if of that sort of mev to mrv scale or you just take some time off and then start again so yeah there's no no real th sort of concept such as normal volume it's you know what is your volume everybody's yeah. going to be individualistic and you know, i have some clients that have eight sets in a session i have some that have 20 because they're not yeah. as strong they don't train as hard they don't train as frequently they might train three times a week rather than five times a week so it's it's you know going to differ for everyone yeah no i i completely agree like again i think you answered that really well to be fair you know, considering that the fact that he sacked you if he if he, if he didn't sack you he wouldn't have to sack you this because you would have explained it to him yeah or maybe, maybe you should have actually explained it to him while the coaching was going on so now he would have known and then Instead, maybe i just every check-in was cheers mate photos of sound see you next week i should i knew i should have coached him better that's what it should have been yeah right you got any more from last week? Yeah. or like in all seriousness you remember Oren made some like yeah, made made good, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah good. on a lot of muscle yeah uh, he's a good lad who was training out of like his home topless squatting was that him or was that someone else 
I remember there was a guy, I think there was a guy who was squatting topless who'd be like going into sets and he'd be like, ah, like screaming and stuff. This is like last year. This oh, is like... Owen. Yeah, Owen. Owen. Yeah, I got, yeah. I still coach Owen, but he had, he's the guy that broke his leg. Oh, he's been okay. Recovering for ages. He's still, like, he's still recovering, but he's almost there now. Uh, yeah. Final one from last week. This is yeah. from Radu Popescu. Cheers for the question, Radu. Did you and Reese ever solve any niggles? Seems like those injuries always remain or come back. <laughs> Aaron, we need to we need to at our uh, physio. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I've been just quite unlucky with my knees. So like my, my left knee was ruined. That's fine now. It's now my right knee because it was overcompensating for my left knee. So that was fine. Um, and then other than that, I don't really have any major upper like, upper body niggles. I have just a few issues here or there that arise. And like Finn, your back's been a long term issue, but like the diagnostics on that is still unclear. Like it's it's not good. Like um you've had sciatica, which again it's not like a, it, it's not like a, something gone pop or whatever, but you had that that kind of alleviated, didn't you? And your back is more so it just flares on and off. I think that's almost in a in a bad way, like you almost have to embrace that. So it's not where like we have an injury and it just stays around. But unfortunately, that is the case with chronic injuries. Like, especially when we train, like the best thing for me and Finn to do would probably be to go to a warm country for three months, get massages and and like actual kind of physio work on it daily and not train at all. And then we probably return and within about a week, we'd probably be, about, be like battered again. That's it. But, I think like, oh, yeah. without, I don't want to sound overly hardcore and be like, oh, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, obviously it matters. And, you know, I don't want, I don't want people thinking that you should be getting injured all the time, but if you train at a decent level of intensity and you get relatively strong, you're going to have issues. Like yeah. it's simply going to happen. And again, like I'll have to say this to, to clients quite a lot, like their form can be exquisite across every movement. But over time, if you're getting a lot stronger, if you're, if you add a hundred kilos to your deadlift in the space of a couple of years, like you might experience some issues along the way, like yeah. just little things like, Oh, my lower back, you know, like, Ollie, for example, his lower back had a bit of a spasm. A few weeks, yeah, it's a bit frustrating. That might aggravate him again in another few months. Like it's yeah. annoying, but also, what are you going to do? Just stop training, stop bodybuilding, stop stop training with any real level of effort, so that you're fine. Like if, if you want to do that, that that's fine. But also, you're probably not going to put on that much tissue. Like as long as these in, these injuries for us, for example, they haven't set us back massively, and we're also we're not doing anything stupid. Like I know, obviously, you do like some zero rep maxes and stuff, but. We're not doing anything stupid, like form-wise. We're not doing a barbell back squat and taking 10 assisted reps, or we're not doing a hack squat that we can't do, or a leg press where we're pushing our hands on our legs. Like We're not doing anything stupid, but yeah. it's almost like wear and tear. It's like your car. You might have the best car in the world, but if you drove it every day, and you drove it pretty fast some days, and you drove it until it had 100,000 miles on it, then it's probably going to have some issues. You're going to need new wheels, or it might have something go wrong with it. And you have to get it sorted. And this is coming from a guy whose car is actually right now getting fixed. My car is in the garage today, yeah. And they haven't <laughs> rang me, and it's half past four. The best not. Ex- I hope they don't think I'm leaving it in there for days. I need it now. Like, well, not now, but I need it for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, mate, I need you're, it. You're Oi, the- I need it now. Yeah, that that jacket you're in right now. You, we said you were a football hooligan. Just go down there and knock them out. This is I my rest day. Car. This is my rest day jumper. Have you noticed? I think I've had it on every rest day for the past six weeks since I bought it. Yeah, I've washed it. Yeah. No, nah, makes sense. Right, my question from today, my, my last minute ones. Yeah, let's crack Both on. never compete again or never see each other again. What do you choose? Mm, I'd say, uh, yeah, I'd say compete. I, I like Finn. I, I, do, I do like you, mate. And you're going to go, yeah, I'd, I'd rather not see you. I'd I'm never see Reese again, yeah. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for that. What would know, that's, a weird, that's a weird one because yeah. I almost feel like I would... This is going to sound very soppy, but I would rather you compete because I feel like you've got the potential to do well. Yeah. So you, you, and then also, I mean, I'd never get to have to see you again, which would be nice. But you know what I mean? Like, that's what, what you'd say. Like. You'd say, Reese, sacrifice our relationship. Go, go pro. But realistically, it's just so that I don't have to see you. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me no. look like the good guy. No, I yeah. think, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's one of them, like, I'd want to enjoy my time training. And I wouldn't be able to enjoy my time training if I wasn't. You'd have to train with Sanaya. Fuck it, hell. Fuck that. Fuck that. No chance. You got headphones in. I don't think Sanaya. No, I'm just choosing to ignore the bullshit. Just choosing to ignore your bullshit. Fair enough. Um, So yeah, no, I'd I'd say I'd yeah I'd I'd like I'd I wouldn't I'm not competing. That's right. That would be the answer. Um, 
do you have a sympathy do you have sympathy for your physio treating you you two big fuckers needs a magic wand from aaron ab cryo cheers aaron uh, oh, he's no, he's that. i was i was gonna say i'm really yeah. not very big so cheers aaron. No. appreciate that he's, yeah we do aaron have just any... calls me aaron just calls me fat now all the time does it is that what it is just fat yeah he called me fat in the video yeah cheers cheers aaron. Right. two times yeah just, two just times. twice cheers mate um so yeah, uh, I guess he's just—he's probably just saying he can't find my musculature, can't find my back. When he's trying to sort out my back, he can't find any muscle because it's just all fat. So yeah, he's he calls, probably, me, uh, calls me a big cheat every time. He always asks like, how, he, the first time I think I spoke to him after I told him I was assisted, he was like, "How does it feel when it goes in? Does it hurt?" And I'm like, "Not really." And he's like, "Oh." And then you, you bent him over. Good? You bent him over the table. You were like, yeah. "I'll show you how it feels." <laughs> That's what it was, and he was like, "Restart." <laughs> I can tell you, you, like, you so like, I can really feel it. I've, 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 I've jabbed myself once. And I can really feel it. Yeah, I can really feel it now. Um, mate, last question for me. Actually, I've got two more. Um, do you think people overcomplicate peak week? Yeah, 100%. Like, I think it's massively... I, I, I find it really annoying. You know, when people are like, oh, my physique got brought to life. This was better. You look the exact Crazy same. Crazy transformation. Low, yeah. No, like, at a low level, anyone who's listening to this who's competing or her people compete and they're like, oh, I've got a brand new physique. The second the car, wait till the carbs go in. The vast majority of the time, you look exactly the same. Yeah, like, if you look good a week out from your show, you'll look good on, yeah. sh- on show day. The most, if you look awful thing, a week out, you'll look awful on show day. The most important <laughs> thing is that you're ready beforehand because otherwise, yeah. you know, the, the peak week, if anything, is just going to make you look worse if you're not, if you're not already peeled. Yeah. So you've got to be ready. Yeah. And then the main the main benefit of it is just reducing fatigue because that brings. Yeah, I was going to look so just don't, move, don't move as much and eat a bit more. Then you can. You can I think it's massively overcomplicated in terms of things like um, fluid intake and sodium intake and things like that. Like I think that should already all be established. And realistically, that the the less things you do in a peak week, the better, because I think yeah. otherwise you're complicating it too much, and you you're basically putting yourself at a a greater risk of messing it up if you're like right we'll change sodium we'll change fluid we'll cut fluid at this point we'll change this we'll change that we'll do a fat load then we'll do a carb load like i think you can easily just overcomplicate it like, ultimately get ready early and then sort of reverse out into the show yeah simple as that like yeah just, i, I didn't know just really too much other than literally when my fit- I, I remember about two weeks out from the show like my legs were looking like no my legs were really lean like really lean but my legs were like lean and then like my, my steps came down my cardio came down and i all like i remember i flexed my legs and i had veins everywhere and it was like god my legs literally changed within like four to five days just chilling out and dropping Mate, that fatigue even, and just dropping almost you know even you know what we're saying? Um, you know will jones when he did his photo shoot yeah. like, he wasn't inside out peeled but three days of low steps because his steps were quite high three days of low steps and he, he had some legs it was like what the yeah. fuck like literally yeah. just from that like yeah it's i crazy. remember thinking like, my legs aren't that lean like, my legs have been leaner like i remember looking thinking my legs have been leaner my legs have been leaner and then all of a sudden literally it was like li- like three days and they were like wow this is my legs look good <laughs> my legs are really good and uh yeah it was, it was an interesting one so yeah definitely be ready early and just chill that's it you don't need to be messing around like, ideally like what we said like a, a slight carb like titration as you go throughout the week a linear carb load and that's if you're ready and then for the vast majority of people i'd say something like that like literally just coast into it don't think too much of it yeah you know? i think especially it depends on the the time frame of your shows so if you've got a sh- like for example like perrin like our goal isn't the qualifier really like mm. because we want to do better than just the qualifier so we're not going into the qualifier trying to make him 100 percent. we'll probably yeah. coast into the qualifier we won't even have a peak week he might he probably won't even be inside out by that point yeah because he doesn't need to be but because then he's still got six weeks plus until finals and then potentially shows after finals. So it's, it's knowing what show you're aiming for as well. So if you're, if you're, if you, let's say for that exact scenario, if you've got six weeks between the qualifier and the finals of the federation that you're, let's say focused on the most, if you go for the first show at hundred percent, you're trying to maintain that look for six weeks. It's, it's very difficult. You can have, you can slightly reverse out of it and then dig again a bit, but you'd be better off coming down and, and sort of, you know, gradually sort of basically just cruising into the show at 80%, dig into then, okay, now you're hundred percent and now we're reversing out going into the shows that are going to be the ones that we're really focusing on. 
So I think that that's important as well. It's not just as simple as, you know, yeah, you should be doing this for every single show that you do because it's not that that easy. I look better at the finals by an absolute, like by a lot in comparison to the first show. Yeah. And I literally was doing less, eating a lot more food. I did like two cardio sessions in between the finals in like in three weeks when I was doing daily cardio. I was doing less steps. I was eating oh god probably like an extra 400 grams of carbs on training days in comparison like once you've got that look it's so much easier to kind of like marinate it and make it look better and then also you drop off that level of stress and you're not worried and you're not thinking like oh god i'm gonna be soft i'm I'm like right i've got the look you don't need to stress you can drop off any like external stress which is cardio steps and be good to go from there right should we smash through these i've got one more from today and then we are gucci all right you do that one then and i'll smash through mine when do you know it's time to swap a movement out? Alex Kingsley, 45. Um, I would say if it's stalled, I hate the whole three strikes and you're out because that's just what everyone says. If it's stalled for a few weeks, if you've reset it and it's still not feeling good, uh, if it's causing any niggles or any issues, um, if it doesn't feel progressible is a big one. And yeah. I think that massively depends on your mentality because a lot of people go, oh, I just can't progress it. It's like, you can. But we've said before like you can tell when a movement doesn't feel progressible so like for example like the dumbbells for me because the stability was just so poor it was causing issues with my shoulder the weight didn't even feel hard it wasn't heavy it wasn't even challenging i finished the set and i didn't even feel like my delts had done anything but i failed you know what i mean it's like okay that doesn't feel progressible so i'm going to change that but if a movement if everything's going well and it's just stalling then I would argue, you know, maybe look at your frequency. Are you doing it twice a week or three times a week? Reduce the frequency on it. Um, yeah. If you are doing it once a week and it's stalling, then maybe look at the rep ranges because it's very easy to just go, oh, I'm going to change it. But if it's a movement that you really like, why why change it just because it's stalling? Like, just because yeah, it's um, not progressing in terms of numbers doesn't mean that it's not still a beneficial exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 and then at the same time, can tempos be manipulated? The progression isn't just reps and load. Yeah, exactly. Know? in plenty plenty of other like facets of training i think it's just people get orientated on load and reps which we do as well but additionally to that if the internal feels still good but you're not progressing could you make a slight manipulation to the tempo could you make a manipulation to the rep range how many times in like a single arm pull down we have to reset it from an eight rep because you can't get it to a nine to then an 11 or a 12 I've and then you can get to 13 or 14 I've yeah. said, I've I, said always, I did it today with like two clients so we're like oh my single arm pull downs are not progressing i need to swap out i'm like well there's not really gonna be a better exercise so let's just drop the rep ranges down or let's make it imagine I, I always say imagine if it was to progress every single week yeah. everyone would be doing the stack everyone would be doing uh, you'd be doing yeah. the stack plus 100 kilos on a single arm pull down if it progressed every week it's not good yeah. that just doesn't happen it's the same with every movement yeah. like if it was to progress every single week everybody would be insanely strong like you know, it, it's not going to happen like that especially like movements like that that are really really isolated where the only body part that's really doing anything is the lat if you're doing it well yeah yeah definitely right, right. your so question crack 30 questions so yeah buddy uh, Will Bertolini has asked, "Do you think a deal?" Another question from Bertolini. Fucking hell, that was a question. I think he, I've not. That was from last week, wasn't it? Okay, he, fair. I don't think he asked one last week. Do you need a deload? Do you think a deload is needed for someone who only trains three times a week? Depends completely on the individual. Yep. Yeah, they it depends be, how strong they, they are. They could be insanely strong, and they could be trained insanely hard at three times a week, three full body days. But I would argue, yeah. and this isn't me being like rude at all to any of Will's clients, but I feel like probably not for his clients and we have clients i have clients who have trained for months and months and months without a deload because they don't train hard enough and i'll tell them that and they know that (laughs) um like but yeah i would i would probably say for i don't know i'd also argue for the vast majority of people that train three times a week they wouldn't be training that hard based off the fact they're only training three times a week and i'd be saying if that's the case do you really prioritize your training like and again there will be people out there there's a few out there that would definitely train three times a week who'd be ridiculously strong but I'd probably say, like, it kind of goes in tune with, you probably don't train that hard if they don't train three times a week. Yeah, they're probably as well without, again, without, I don't want to come across like I'm being presumptuous and I'm sort of... Um, being naive to yeah, the I'm not, I don't, No, I don't want to be, like, stereotyping, oh, they train three times a week, so they obviously don't train hard. But no, no, neither probably, do I. But, and it's the same from yeah. when I was PTing. I used to coach people, I used to PT people that train three times a week, every session with me, and we might do an upper, lower, and a full body. And... Yeah they would never need a deload because every now and again, they'd go on holiday where that would be a deload. 
or yeah. they wouldn't train over Christmas or they wouldn't train over Easter because the kids are off or whatever it may be. That's their form of a deload. Valentine's Day, we need three days off. You don't have to call it a deload, but that is their style of deload, if you like. Next one. Next one, baby. (laughs) So, Ryan Martin. I train 4 a.m. Would you recommend fasted training or eat beforehand? He says he's cutting at the minute. Well... Ryan, it would really depend on what you would prefer. Uh, I would literally weigh up in the session. Like, do you feel like you'd be better in a fed state? If so, eat, train a bit later. It really depends on your commitments. The fact that he's training at 4 a.m., like I'm guessing he's probably getting up at 4, going straight to the gym. I personally wouldn't eat. I, I'd probably be sipping on an intra. I'd have make sure that my pre-bed meal, we've said before, higher fats, have that almost as your pre-workout meal. Make sure your uh, my first thought process would be to get as much fluid in as possible. So I'm not going to the gym in a hyperhydrated state. I'm drinking plenty of fluid um, when I'm waking up. And like I said, I'd probably be sipping on my intra, um, probably on the way to the gym. And then I'd probably be finishing it by like exercise one or two. Um, so you've got some carbohydrates that are going to be easily digestible. You don't need a lot, especially when food's higher. I know he said he's dieting, but like you could train, like we could train fasted and be sound. In a diet, it's going to be a little bit different. That, that pre-workout meal is going to be a little bit more important. That's not to say, like I said, he can have a bigger amount of his carbohydrates in a, in a pre-workout setting, pre-bed and go from there and be sound. But it really depends on and how he feels and how he is as a person. Yeah, but I think also like, 4 a.m. is realistically it's just a time like yeah. so you could get up at 2 30 yeah. and you, yeah. could, you could eat and then you could go and train and then yeah. and like I, I don't know obviously this guy's lifestyle but if he if he's training at four he's maybe at work at six half six maybe he works six till four something like that maybe it's quite long hours like most people work like six till two if it's a shift he might work six to four six thirty or seven yeah, yeah either train afterwards or train before and go to bed you know two hours after you've you finished so if you get up at half two you go to bed at seven like no, no. Yeah, seven and a half hours nope. nah he's only getting up at four because it's more optimal to get up at four and he's uh, that's what a ceo does on a youtube video mm-hmm. like 10 tips to be a, how to be a ceo and it's like get up at 4 a.m a cold shower and, he's and, he's just, and then he just twiddles his thumbs for the rest of the day because he's yeah. like actually i have no work to do like yeah at least you got up four and had that cold, cold, shower. Shower, cold shower instagram story of him waking up at 4 a.m goes to the gym gets home and he's like i've got so much free time to do fuck all <laughs> to go back to bed that's what he's like so yeah but yeah and to be fair like i say obviously four o'clock is just only a time like yes yeah. it's going to play around with your sort of circadian rhythm and i wouldn't recommend people getting up at half two if they don't absolutely have to but nice mate two nabs and thighs. Yeah, back's fucked <laughs> Look, yeah, I, just, I think um the best option would probably be if, if, if you, a, a lot of people struggle eating early in the morning as well, don't they? So best option would probably be like we said, have your, your pre-workout meal as the meal the night before. Yeah. Um, parent Tustin, what were your expectations before you started your first prep? Me and you, like both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Found yeah. uh, expectations. I wanted to win. Uh, I remember I put up PCA announced they were doing an overall um, like they, did, they didn't do the overalls prior to last year you know um, they, I think they did the overall out of all the shows but they didn't do the overall for physique I know that, that um, or whatever I can't remember and I remember putting on my story overall physique champ dot 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 sounds good when they put it up and I like shared it and uh, the, the, the goal was the first show. Like, we didn't even think about the finals. It was the first show, win the class, win the overall. The overall was what I was going for, so overall. Um, the Arnold's would have been to win. And then the finals, we didn't even speak about the finals until I won the overall and we both said, oh, I might as well do it. Like I was, I, it was like, I feel pretty good. I might as well do it. Uh, and that was, again, to win. Um, so, yeah, win, win, win. And I won the class, won the overall, second and the other. So failed the last two. So two out of four, I ticked off. So, yeah, that was the, the objective. Did you have any other expectations like outside of result? Um, what do you mean by expect? Like, like I, I already been what very... were you expecting to look like? Were you happy with what you looked like? You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. I know um, what you mean. Like, my yeah. first thought process was and is result. But then I'm just trying to think outside of that because yeah. 
Yeah, I knew I knew what it would be like. Like I was very much accustomed to the fact of I knew how it felt like because I've been very lean and I've been very, 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 very lean before. I'd obviously have been lucky enough to see you go through the process before. So I already kind of knew from like, oh, I'd seen how you've gone through it. We trained together. I knew how your sessions were. Uh, so I, I didn't really get surprised by really anything. Like I remember the first few times that I felt pretty wank. I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is how this is how I felt before. So it was quite like I was, I was a bit weird. And the, the, more, the more aggressive it got towards the end, the more I enjoyed it because I felt like I was actually pushing myself. And I get like a weird, I get quite a sick, twisted, like boost of feeling pretty trashed. So I was like, cool, this is normal. This is good. Um, and then other than that, like, I mean, like on the show days, it was all good. Uh, like there wasn't really anything that was quite alarming. Like I feel like for a first time competitor, I was quite like, this is how it is. You know, like I already expected it to be like this. So there wasn't really anything that I could be like, this was so different. Uh, I remember actually, I was surprised with how food focused I got before the first show. Like it was the first time in my entire life that I actually had connection to food. Like I remember my cream of rice meal. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. That's the only time in my entire life that I've actually really enjoyed food. Like I thought this is the best thing in the entire world. Prior to that, I'm an absolute robot. I don't like food. And then after I don't like food, but that was the only time that I remember thinking a pizza sounds really, really nice. Like that was what I remember thinking. And that was it. That was the only time I was quite I was, surprised. I was like that. Like it was po post show. It's not during, it's not before because you're not, you're solely focused on it, but yeah, yeah, post show. And that's why people do binge. Like and it's so easy to, because as soon as the rains are off, you think, oh, I don't have to, I don't have to restrict myself at all anymore. Like, and people then go crazy. Um, but yeah, like in terms of my expectations, obviously I was the same. Like I expected and wanted to win everything. Like it was a shame with COVID because of the whole, like I, I wanted to do numerous shows. Like it wasn't just UKDFBA. I wanted to do the BMBF. I wanted to look at doing, you know, a qualifier and then get to the finals. Uh, I wanted to be able to you know, do as many shows as I possibly could. But then obviously with COVID, I couldn't. So that was a bit shit. But yeah, I think if you go in expecting to lose, like already that's not great. You know, it's not the kind of mindset that you need to have. Everybody should go in expecting to be the best that they can be. And obviously people have to be realistic. And again, you know, for example, that's, uh, I'm a perfect example of that is that when I knew that I would be against David, I was very realistic. And I thought, right, this guy is very, very good. I'm probably not going to beat him. But that didn't make me change how I, how I said that. We're in progress work. So remember you said, mate, there's a guy who's doing my show who's amazing. <laughs> you were like, didn't, it, didn't change, it didn't change at all how I was. I still trained the same. I still didn't push myself any harder or any less. Nothing yeah. changed at all because that doesn't matter. Like at the end of the day, he might have turned up soft or he might not have even got there. He might have bot bottled it mentally. You know, yeah. you never know. Like, obviously he didn't and he beat me. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You've got to just stay in your own lane. And obviously I know this isn't the question that parents asked, but I think that's something that will help him a lot is just stay in his own lane. He'll be the one that people will be worried about. So just yeah. focus on yourself. Like I remember, I remember thinking that like regarding all the people that I was up against, like for the finals, when you said, oh, that guy's in your class, Alex. And I was like, Bin, that's good. And then he came up to me and he was like, are you in the juniors? I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, and he like looked at me like it was almost, and I remember saying, this is going to be fun. And I like tapped him on the shoulder and walked off. And it was where, like, I think he expected it to be a bit like a, we're up against each other. It's me v you. And I was like, it's going to be fun. Like, yeah, you want to agree. Yeah, yeah. it's so, it's so the opposite. It's the, best opposite. Best. It's the yeah. complete, well, in my experience, it's the complete opposite of that. Like, yeah. even though I got beat, I was happy that, for David to win because he looked great. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, yeah. I should have won. Like, there's obviously people that are bitter like that. And I get it if it's really close as well. And if you think that yeah. you maybe should, like, obviously it's frustrating, but... Like oh, yeah, when, like for example, when Jack beat you, like you were upset, you were pissed off by it, but you weren't against Jack. You weren't like, oh fucking hell, you should. No, you no, were like, no, no. that's no. annoying. Like, yeah, it was. I think it was like with with Alex. It was like, well, it depends on the look and what you're going for because he was he, he was an alien. Was like, he was with Jack, like, a lot yeah, better. Yeah, like, with Jack, yeah, it was close. Yeah, with Jack, it was very, very close. If it was, if it was given to me, like, like, like I've said to you before, and we've said to you before, like, it wouldn't have been. I don't think there would have been mass objections. You, you, think, been, like, you think you were robbed, don't you? No, I don't think I was robbed. But I think if it was to be up against different judges, and you were to, and we were to, let's say, if we've done the same shows, I think maybe, if I'm honest. But I don't again, know. He, he, he we'll, was we'll, very good. 
he was very good. We'll compete against each other again, that's for sure. I think we will. And uh, it'll be good to see what happens that time. Um, not that's not to say, fucking coming for you, Jack. Like, I fucking hate stuff like that. It's, he's a Jack's mint. But like, yeah, it, it really depends. It depends on what you're after. And uh, and the, the fortunate thing is, and again, you know what I will actually say to Perrin, uh, when it comes to expectations, like I went in knowing that I would be decent. I knew that I'd be, I'd be, I'd be good. Um, I knew that from a, I wanted to get my feet wet prior to seeing what level I'm at. And when like I was having to be told, on a weekly occurrence oh mate you're going to be pro level all that shit I was like I'm not I'm, I remember laughing it off every time I was like, oh, don't listen to no. anyone yeah. like, I've said that so, to him, like he's got a lot of people yeah. around him that will big him up and it's That's, not a bad, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Like, it's no, not a bad no. thing at all but you've got to you got to keep your feet on the ground like like I yeah. said to you like I've never said to you oh mate yeah you're going to be pro like I was no. probably the only one person when you were prepping that was saying when and you'd tell, tell me oh he's just said this you weren't like buzzing about it but you'd come and no. tell me and I'd be like, I'd laugh. I'd, I'd come over, wouldn't I? I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, like, I'd, I'd laugh. Get on with training. Yeah, like, mate, we're here to yeah. train. Get on with the session. Like, yeah. it'd annoy yeah. me yeah. because it was like wasting your, not like people are being nice, but it was almost partly getting in the way of our sessions, which was annoying. Yeah. But also, it was making, not, I know that you're switched on and you weren't going, oh my God, I'm amazing because they said so. I'd but, literally turn around and come up to you and, go, yeah, and laugh. The, the more you get told it. something, the more that you're yeah. going to think. If someone, if people tell you you're amazing all the time, you're going to start believing it more. Yeah. And like, that's, it's, it's nice. And people should come like, it's nice for people to compliment people. I'm not saying that they shouldn't at all, but also you've got to be realistic. And when people are saying to you, Oh, you're going to be pro. It's like, just focus on each day. Don't worry about anything like that. You don't need to be thinking about whether you're going to be pro or not. Like that'll happen when it needs to happen. Like, so yeah, I think, that's something that, so was that and that wasn't the objective it wasn't like imagine first time prep like, oh, i'm going for a pro card it wasn't the case it was to see how, how i was and i knew going into the prep i wasn't at a level that a pro would need to be i knew i wouldn't be far off and that's what i got told i don't think i'm far off at all uh, but i'm not at that level so more work is needed and that's almost how you have to be so yeah right, come on let's crack on we've got what, a few minutes and then it's five o'clock so we'll finish these off uh, Connor Green, uh, advice for maintaining muscle while traveling. Uh, and he's put splits, etc. So uh, I've actually spoke to him about this before. Um, I would recommend, like, depends how often you feel like you can train. If you if you can train twice a week, then train full body twice a week. Do basic compound movements. Do some form of a hinge, some form of a row, some form of a press, some form of a squat, something like that. Yeah, you might not. It depends on what equipment you've got available. You do that, you eat a good amount of protein, you don't you know, go out getting pissed every night, then you're probably going to be able to maintain your muscle. Especially for Connor, like this is without me being like a dick, he's, he's got a decent amount of muscle, but he's not, he's not an elite level. If you're elite level, to maintain that amount of muscle is a lot harder. But the level that Connor's at, a couple of times training a week, eating good, pro, good amount of protein every day and, and getting enough sleep, he'll maintain his muscle absolutely fine. You might look at you might gain a bit more body fat if you're eating a bit more, but you're not going to lose loads of muscle. Like also, that's one thing. Don't try and I diet at the same time. Like being a in a hypercaloric diet, eat enough to at least maintain body weight. And just I eat think protein. people would be very surprised how little you have to do to maintain muscle. I was like to actually is, lose yeah. muscle, Jesus Christ, you must be trying. Like if you're intentionally not eating you're intentionally like training and like doing a 10,000, 15,000 steps. Yeah. You'll probably lose muscle. Over a consistent but, period of time yeah. as well. Like if you had yeah. two weeks on a holiday where you didn't train at all, I would say where you didn't eat any protein, but you're going to eat some protein obviously. But if yeah. you didn't eat adequate protein, you didn't train, you didn't get that much sleep for a couple of weeks, you're going to feel and look like shit, but you're not going to lose muscle. Yeah. It's too no, like you'll be back to your best within a couple of weeks of being back into routine. You'll lose a lot of fullness, like cell swelling and everything. You'll, yeah, of course you will, but you won't lose loads of muscle. Yeah, definitely. Right. Last um, one is this? Yeah, and then we've got. We'll finish off with Ped's fun fact. Okay. Um, this is from one of my clients, Cam Sinfit. Fave gym clothing brands. I do quite like them. Yeah, uh, explosive fibers, jumpers, fantastic. Um, uh, chosen few. Um, I don't want to say gasp because gasp is such a trend. Like <laughs> they all are. We're saying this. Yeah. Like a- anything that becomes, anything that is slightly liked, anything that is half decent quality ends up becoming a massive trend, um, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. Like it's good for the business, obviously, but. 
if if you want to wear what everyone's wearing like it's difficult because like for example gasp like six months ago gasp was pretty cool and yeah. people who trained really well and were quite big were wearing gasp now everyone wears wears gasp like literally everyone wears gasp gasp is yeah. like the new my protein or the new yeah. the new gym shark like, yeah yeah and, and next year it'll be something else and the year after that will be something else you know a, a year ago it was jp everyone was wearing jp clothing now yeah. it's this now it's that changes all the time um but yeah i would generally just say find your own kind of style that you like and don't really worry about what anyone else is wearing like yeah or do what everyone else and just copy me and buy white vans black joggers yeah and then yeah. oversized hoodie. that's all i do like, and everyone's like, like asos like we've got some nice nice like oversized t-shirts from yeah. ASOS. asos is quite good yeah I always get asked that whenever I wear, you know, the grey one. I always yeah. get asked that. Like, Where's that top from? I'm yeah. like, I'm some of my, some of my favourite really oversized tees are ASOS. They fit really nice. Yeah, they do. Right, Definitely. we'll finish off with with Ped's fun fact. Here we go. That's drum roll. It's in my DMs apparently. Oh, oh it's a long one. Here okay. we go. Are you ready? Yep. There was a guy who always squatted in the opposite way. That is, he detached the bar on the opposite side of the pins so that instead of taking two steps back, he did them forward. But okay. he used to really take six to seven steps forward. He really squatted a lot far from the rack. He did like 30 reps. And when he had to put the bar back, he would take six to seven steps backwards and reposition the bar on the pins. But one day, the inevitable happened. What I had always feared... He he unplugged the bar. He unplugged the bar. <laughs> yeah. Took his steps and started his set of squats. In the meantime, I saw a boy, certainly also a beginner, who, seeing the apparently free rack, decided to take away the pins from his rack to use them elsewhere. I didn't think that. I, I didn't. I just thought he was going to fall. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he was going to like go and rack it, be tired, and just fall over. I leave yeah. you to imagine the ending. The boy, when he noticed that the pins were missing, he spent one minute asking for help with the bar on his back because he didn't know how the hell to get that bar off his back. Ah, since since that time, he hasn't squatted in reverse. Ha ha. <laughs> I like the two there. It's a good fun fact. It's a good story, Ped. Uh, yeah. Well written. Well written. I liked it. Yeah. What I would say is, why didn't you help him? <laughs> why didn't you tell the boy oh mate he's using those <laughs> Ped sat away from him just watching going, yeah. Ped's just stood in the corner he's like that Homer Simpson meme where he just hides yeah, yeah it's like that but Ped yeah. keep, keep them coming I'm liking the stories yeah but don't be making them up Ped you can't be like just making things up now I don't think you can't be thinking up. About... no 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 I'm not saying he is but he's going to try and beat that with another fun fact because that's a good fun fact that's a good fact about Ped that he's a bystander and he doesn't get involved and he, he watches inevitable squat guy fail and get stuck with the bar on his back. We're just just there in the in the shadows. Right. One day Pat, me and Finn saw Finn, me and me and me, me and Finn saw Finn. Me and Finn saw uh, a guy stuck in a Smith machine. It was yeah, a fun did. it was a fun day that. Yeah. Stuck. But we <laughs> had to rewrap it. We did help him. Yeah, we did help him. Right. That's that. Episode mate, what episode is it? Is it forty one? Right, 41, there we go. Hopefully everyone's enjoyed. Thanks for the story tag, thanks for the mentions. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask the question box every Thursday. Other than that, we'll welcome you guys back in the next episode. Bye-bye.